Okay, thank you. So good morning, everyone, or rather good afternoon. Uh, I'm Raya Bichari. I'm the founder and CEO of Our Academy. Uh, essentially, Our Academy is a future-focused uh, education provider uh, that offers a wisdom-based education. Our goal is to prepare young minds for this world of exponential technologies and accelerating change. We have an online platform and offline programs that I'll speak about uh, in a little bit of depth uh, today. And um, essentially, our core mission is not just to prepare students for the university or the workforce, we do that. But beyond that, our mission is to prepare young minds to contribute to what we call positive civilization level change. We ask ourselves, what kind of a world do we want to live in? And what are the characteristics that students in this kind of a world have? And how can we give them those dispositions, values, and skills? We are an award-winning organization. Uh, we were the winners of Startup of the Year at last year's Guess Awards, finalists at Bet Global, and also finalists at the Next Billion EdTech Prize. Uh, we've had lots of amazing successes in the region. We're based here in the UAE and in Canada. Uh, we've been partners with the Dubai Future Foundations, uh, Area 2071, for over a year now. Uh, we were invited uh, just la a year ago to pitch our academy at the G20 uh, summit as an example of a company that is preparing young minds for the future of work. And uh, we have also, you know, worked with the ministry here. We've worked with GEMS Education and offering our program to their entire network of students and uh, much more. So what do we will offer at our academy? Uh, so one of the main kind of solutions that we have is our online platform. Uh, on the All Academy online platform, uh, students uh, can access interactive modules that take less than an hour to complete. And these modules cover the kinds of skills, values, and competencies that are often not covered in traditional school curriculum, but are really important if they're to have a positive impact on the world. The modules are interactive, so the students actually have to participate in online activities, discussions, exercises, in order to get their micro certificate at the end. And uh, they're also designed to be by award-winning educators. Uh, if you're wondering what kind of topics we cover, they include anything from you know, futures thinking, future of medicine, future of finance, uh, down to 21st century skills like creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship, and even mindsets like intelligent optimism optimism or grits and resilience and life skills. So it's a very kind of rich and diverse curriculum. And one of the things that distinguishes us, I think, is we, you know, there's a lot of amazing companies out there working on technology. We felt like there was a gap with curriculum and content, uh, that there's no point digitizing curriculum that is outdated. So we decided to actually create novel curriculum that is pedagogically sound and prepares young minds uh, for the future. In addition to the online platform for learners, uh, we have an online platform for educators. Uh, there they get access to CPD certified modules on topics such as STEAM education, neuroscience and mind-brain education, creating cultures of innovation, and much more. And I will say all of our online kind of modules are also available as workshops and boot camps because we found that there was a lot of demand uh, for in-person experiences as well. I'd like to end by telling you a little bit more about the All Academy Learning Hub. So the All Academy Learning Hub was launched last fall uh, in an effort to start paving alternative pathways in education. So between September to March of this year, we piloted our first program with uh, about 30 students who spent Saturdays with us at Area 2071. Uh, the goal was to move learning outside of a classroom and into an exciting innovation hub. And the model of the Learning Hub um, was designed uh, to focus on a cutting edge core curriculum that was fluency and skills based and innovative personalized learning pathway. So the first three hours students would spend with us on what we call our core curriculum. So we'd you know, develop things like critical thinking, identifying cognitive biases. We'd focus on ethics and morality related to future technologies. We'd cover uh, things like you know, exercising gratitude, finding purpose, finding meaning, solving global challenges, and building those core skills that everyone needs to have. 
And then the second half of the day was spent, well, every week is spent on innovative personalized learning pathways. So students get to pick from pathways where they then get matched against industry experts who guide them through creating a project uh, that they can then add to their portfolio and develop skills as they do so. So for example, uh, one of our students in the exponential entrepreneurship pathway has designed uh, for her project, a wristband that would help detect seizures. Another group of students in the global ethics pathway have developed an ethical framework for uh, technologies like brain machine interfaces. On the post earth pathway, we have students that have uh, developed a, a prototype of a machine that could extract water from Mars and purify it. So just the gist of it is that instead of exams, students are evaluated by their positive impact on the world. And, um, you know, if you would like to kind of uh, explore being involved on the learning pathway, uh, sorry, on, on the Academy Learning Hub, we're launching a number of new cohorts this year, including virtual cohorts. So I'd love to have an extended conversation uh, about that. And uh, just to summarize, uh, one of the key benefits here is that not only do students get to develop these core skills, they also get to develop their portfolio uh, through their pathway, but also their network, because we bring in a lot of amazing guest speakers, astronauts, entrepreneurs, uh, eh, 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 educators, scientists, actually network and mentor them as well. Um, so yeah, that's the summary of what Our Academy is all about. You can always find obviously more details on our website, uh, but we really like to work with schools in customizing solutions for them or working, partnering with them to figure out how best we can create value. So if there's anything that you have in mind that I haven't touched on uh, in this brief presentation, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll put my email uh, in the chat as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, Raya, um, for for that um, really, really inspiring, um, for telling us your journey that you had with our academy. I wanted to expand a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit more about how many students you've had so far um, in Dubai for the first uh, pilot of the program? Yeah, so the Learning Hub itself, we had 30 students, but with all of our other offerings, um, so for example, in the past, GEMS Education purchased a license for our curriculum for its entire network of students, and it was accessed by thousands of students who completed the modules with lots of positive feedback. On our own online platform, we have over 2,000 students uh, who are enrolled uh, and are completing modules. Uh, and then in the in-person programs, we've also done a lot of standalone workshops in schools. So those are just some of the key numbers. Perfect, thank you. And um, do we have any questions from uh, anyone on the, on the calls? A reminder, if anyone has any questions, you can just unmute yourself and ask and if not we will actually be sharing uh, the one pages and the presentations of the companies with you and the contact details of the founders i see there's a uh, girija hello hello yes yes uh, how can uh, this o academy can be integrated into the indian curriculum schools uh, so, I'm, yes, we've actually worked with a number of Indian curriculum schools. In fact, one of the CBSE schools that we worked with mandated all of their grade 11s to complete our curriculum uh, under enrichment lessons. So it's really flexible. The modules can be completed on an on-demand, like, um, self-paced, you know, way by the students. Just to give you a sense of how schools implement it, sometimes they, like I said, incorporate it into enrichment sessions during the school day. Other times they have it as after school sessions. Other times they're a little hands off where they just pass it on to the parents and have the students complete at home. If you do have a block of enrichment time in the school timetable, uh, there's definitely get, you know, a, a lot of room there to incorporate the curriculum. And generally speaking, we also, and I'd be happy to send this document to anyone who's interested, is we've mapped out alignment with the KHD school inspections framework. So, you know, in areas such as innovation and uh, entrepreneurial skills, I know schools are now getting uh, evaluated and assessed by the KHD on that front, and we've made sure to align with some of those standards. So I'd be happy to share that with you uh, okay. if you Review it. Yeah, but my concern is that won't it clash with the CBSC syllabus grade uh, 10 and 12? In what sense? Time wise? Yes, time wise, and they have a very heavy curriculum, CBSC. Yeah. 
and uh, how can Absolutely. they yeah how can they incorporate so, this their children are interested in this but how yes. can they seamlessly integrate this into their uh, yeah. studies so that's one of the reasons we modularize the curriculum. So uh, on the platform, they get access to 130 modules. Each module take less, takes less than an hour to complete, and students can start and finish whenever they want. So for example, with one of the schools that we work with, I think they, the way they were doing it is every two weeks, they wanted to make sure each student completed at least one module. So that was the equivalent of 30 minutes of time in a week. And the, our platform also obviously allows them to save their answers and their progress and come back to it later instead of having it be at a fixed time. So it offers a lot of flexibility for the school and the students to modularize it in a way that works for them. Okay. When you implement this in a school, all students are support, supposed to take part or only individual students, if they are interested, they can pursue or something like that? Yeah, it's up to the school really. Like some schools have done that where they've mandated it for a year group or a group of gifted and talented students but others just kind of sent a circular home and if parents were interested in signing up they signed up so it's a spectrum we find that activity rates are much higher if there is someone at school kind of reminding them or following up with them or you know inspiring the students to make time for any opportunity i think this is not just applicable to all academy but it's really up to the school how they want to implement it okay okay thank you raya okay no worries. Thank you for your questions. Perfect. Uh, right. Thank you so much. If there's any additional questions, please feel free to put them on the chat. We also have a chat feature on Zoom. I know that Zoom um, um, might be a new um, uh, it might be a new platform, so we're all getting used to all these e-learning, e-conferencing, virtual meetings. Um, so thank you, Raya. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, coming up next, uh, we have... Um, Amani from Waza. Uh, so Amani, I will uh, leave it uh, to you um, to start if you want to start the presentation and maybe switch on your uh, your video if, if you can. Yeah. Uh, so can you see my presentation now? Yes, we can. Okay, wonderful. So I'm gonna do this. Okay, now everything is, can you see everything? Okay, uh, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Amani Abouter. I'm the founder and CEO of Waza. Uh, actually, I'm a mechatronics engineer. Also, I have a master's degree in business administration. I have uh, many years of experience on, the, on entrepreneurship, ed education technologies, uh, and high tech. Uh, I am the senior advisor of the Minister of Entrepreneurship in Palestine. Also, I've been featured in Forbes 30 Under 30. Uh, so today I will tell you more about my company, Waza. Uh, so uh, our passion is to deal with companies related to education and we spent many hours with teachers to discuss all the problems that they have inside the classes and we found out that teachers spend a lot of time doing so many things that's away from the kids, from, for example, managing the classroom, taking attendance, creating activities, write reports, share these reports with the administration of the uh, kindergarten schools or preschools, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, teachers, they feel that they are overwhelmed with all these tools that they are using, either to do their administration, administrative work, in addition to uh, the communication work that they are doing. For example, if the teacher has, uh, if she wants to communicate with the parents, she can uh, communicate with them on WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, or even Instagram, and none of these uh, channels are the official way to communicate with parents. But since parents want to be connected more with their kids, they are using all these channels to communicate. And none of these communication are official, and the teacher needs to share her personal phone number with the parents to communicate with them. And we don't believe that this is the right way to communicate and this is the reason that we created Waza. So simply Waza is a mobile application and dashboard that enables the teachers to manage all the administrative and communication activities in an easy and simple way. You can download our application easily through our Waza, uh, through App Store or Google Play and then you can uh, just download the app and register your school and then we will uh, use, uh, we will give you the, the access to the system and you can enjoy using it and since now we are participating with KHDA and DFA uh, we are providing a free trials to all the schools, all the, early, all the early learning centers and preschools to use our system and to enjoy using it. 
So this is the main screens of our application. We have admin screen, we have teacher's screen, and we have parents' screen. The admin have, has full uh, accessibility to the full system. They can see the information of the students, all the teachers, all the classes. The teacher has only uh, access to the, the classes that she's responsible for. And parents have like a Facebook page for their kids where they receive all the information that related to their uh, kids. For example, if you if you see this is the main page of the teachers, if she click on the students and click on the name of a man, for example, she can see all the information of a man is in a really and simple way. She doesn't need to go to the computer uh, or to open a website. All what she needs to do is just open the application and she can get all the information she wants. Uh, let's take another feature, which is the attendance. If she wants to take the attendance, she just click on attendance and just have a look at the photos. And uh, after that, she click on the photo, like the photo of the kid, like here, uh, and a green sign will, will show up. And when it show up, uh, then uh, it will be sent a direct notification for the parents that your kids are safe, they are here inside the class. In addition to that, parents can say our kids are not coming, they are not here uh, now. In addition to that, we can have multiple other features, for example, learning, missing items, notes. So let's take, for example, about learning. Uh, they can choose any kind of activity that they are doing inside the class. They can tag all the students on some, some of them, add photos and share it with the parents. In addition to all all of these features, we have the calendar. Well, the calendar, the teachers can create, uh, for example, a picnic, and they can they can share it with all the classes or one of the classes, and they can they can say who said yes, who said no, and if there is no one answer, they can send the reminder. In addition to that, something that is really important for this situation, which is distance learning, we have the calendar where teachers can add any kind of uh, activities or any kind of homeworks that the the parents need to see so they can follow up with their kids during the day for schools or even early learning centers. For example, we have this kid needs to learn alphabet or learn uh, sizes uh, or shapes. And you can easily add it by clicking on the plus sign, add all the, the information you need, add photos and share it with the parents. And this is how it looks like for the parents. It's really simple, easy, beautiful uh, design. And parents, they don't need a training. Teachers, they don't need a training. They just download the app and start doing working on it. And this is the, the parents' screen as well, where they can uh, add, oh, we have a leave application, early pickup, or if they want to switch between the kids' accounts. It's really simple, it's really easy without any password or anything else. Uh, so using our system, you have all in one solution in one application and one dashboard. So we have also a website where, they, where you can download all the reports and see all the analytics. Uh, it's easy, it's easy, it's really simple and parents loving it. In addition to that, teachers saving more time to spend it with the kids and take care of them. Uh, we have local partners, we have regional partners and uh, we, we, we are, we've been featured in Forbes magazine. Uh, in addition to all of that, uh, we are now giving a free trials to all of the schools in, in Dubai and in UAE. So if you want to have access to our wonderful application and dashboard, please reach me out. Thank you very much. Perfect, Amani. Thank you so much for, um, for walking us through that. Really appreciate it. Um, is there any questions from... Is there any questions right now from anyone on the calls? If not, Amani can share uh, the link on the chat. Yes. Perfect. Um, so if there's, any, uh, if there's any questions, Amani, you can write maybe the link to Waza and also your email, and then we can, uh, okay. um, we can start and uh, we can engage in a discussion uh, with whoever's uh, on the call after. And okay, perfect. So next we're going to have uh, Raphael from Amy. Can you Hi. hear me and see my screen? Yes, now we can hear you. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So right. Good afternoon. And thank you all for coming along. Uh, my name is Raphael, CEO and founder of Amy. I want you all to imagine a world where every child has a private tutor, someone who is always there to help them learn. In this world, even math becomes easy. Children all over the world struggle to learn because we teach them all in the same way even though we know that everyone learns differently. Just think about it. Schools haven't changed since your grandparents went there. 
they used to have one teacher with a blackboard standing in front of a class full of students with slates. Now we have one teacher with PowerPoint standing in front of a class full of students with laptops. Even online courses don't change this, simply replacing the teacher with video. What students really need is a private tutor, someone who knows exactly what they need to learn and is always there to help them. In the old days, this was a luxury only royals could afford. Now we have artificial intelligence so we can give private tutors to everyone. The education system we use now of schools was invented 200 years ago when people used to drive around in horse-drawn carriages. Now we are driven by self-driving cars. So why is it that education is fundamentally stayed unchanged? I have a background teaching mathematical modeling at university and spent a lot of time doing curriculum development work and tutoring there. And I learned a number of key things during my time. Firstly, that I could help a student from who was going to fail to pass by giving them private tutoring or from passing to getting an A. And that I realized that the key thing about this was that I gave them specific feedback as they were solving problems and gave them the information they needed to fill their knowledge gaps. The second key learning I had as a lecturer was students would come to me and say, look, I do not understand what you're teaching me. And as I'd look at their work and say, well, actually you do. You've completely understood what I've taught you. What is missing is something you should have learned three years ago when you were still at school. So I realized that the only way to really make education effective and to solve these problems was to give every child a private tutor. But I also realized that most students could, couldn't afford that. And even if they could, there was simply a shortage. So I realized the only way to solve this was to create an AI based private tutor that was truly scalable so we could give one to every child in the world. And so this is why we created Amy. You see, learning maths is different from other subjects. Every piece of knowledge that you need in math is like one of these blocks of Jenga. And if you're missing too many at the bottom of your tower, the whole tower falls down. So Amy is that artificial intelligence based private tutor, which works just like a human tutor, but is scalable. So we can put one tutor for every student in your class and give you the analytics you need to be a successful teacher. Here's an uh, a quick screenshot of the dashboard. You can see Amy presents a problem and you work through that step by step. If you make a mistake, Amy gives you really specific feedback. So she's understood here that you've actually tried to subtract instead of adding. And that's enough to get students to carry on and not get stuck. But she also understands why you made that mistake will now teach you the underlying skill that you need in real time. So you can be, learn at your full potential. What we're effectively doing is taking education to the next level. We started with private tutoring for some, went to mass education for all, and now we're moving into the age we will give private tutoring to everyone. As teachers, you might ask, well, are you gonna replace me? And I can assure you that we're not. No AI has the capabilities of a good teacher. But what we do want to do is take away those mundane, dreary tasks that you have, like marking, report writing, and even setting the assignments your students need to do. We see this as a symbiotic relationship, just like the anemone and the clownfish, who are much more successful and happier when they're both there. We also give teachers really specific feedback about their students so that they can walk into the class knowing exactly who they need to talk to, who needs help with what, who's engaged, who isn't, and allows them to be much more effective. So where are we on this journey? Our system is live. We're working with the biggest publisher in New Zealand and our system is rolling out into schools at the moment. We're also talking to a number of companies and publishers around the world and they're looking for partners here in the UAE to do some trials to see how it works in a local context. I want to end by saying that we live in the age of science fiction where almost everything is possible. So dream big and make your dream count. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. I really appreciate that. Um, and I have a question. So let's say that one of the schools wants to integrate Amy in their maths class, in one of their mm -hmm. maths class. Can you, how, do, how does that actually look like? And who, do, who needs to be able to share the application with the child? Does the teacher give it to the student or how, how does mm -hmm. that dynamic work? Yeah, so, so at this stage, we're looking for some schools who want to run a, a pilot effectively within one or two of their or a few of their classes. And we'll work with the teacher and say, hey, look, what are you teaching you know, in a few weeks time? We'll get that set up and basically set up 
like a little course for the students to work through over a number of weeks. And you might run that for one of your lessons per week or set it as homework. It's quite flexible how the actual teachers use it. And what we'll do is we'll use that just to make sure it works, you're getting the right information you need, and then we can look at rolling that out across the school, et cetera, um, in the following semesters. But the idea is that we can integrate into existing learning management systems or give you your own version of Amy um, so that it's, you know, looks and feels like your school. And uh, thank you, Raphael, for answering that. And let's say I want to implement uh, Amy in the school and just test it out. How long does it take? To just test uh, I think, think to set up a test will probably be a week or two and we'll work closely with the teacher just to make sure we've really got exactly the content that you need and that it's all ready to go for you. And you can do that virtually, correct? Yes, we can. Fantastic. Okay. Perfect. Um, if there's no more, if there's any other questions, um, please feel free to ask them now. And if not, um, definitely put uh, Raphael in touch with your mathematics departments. I see a question from Shweta. Uh, hi, I want to ask, does this have an app as well to no, work it, on it, iPad or Android device? So this is a web-based system uh, during the trial phase, uh, but it is optimized so it can work on mobile. So it will happily work on your uh, iPad, et cetera, and even on a phone. So it'll be an app? Uh, it, it's a website, but it's, it's built to be native so that it fits on those screens as well. Uh, so it'll be just a website? Yes, oh, during the, during the trial phase. Yeah, for, oh, for the trial of your website. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine, sure. Thank but you. after that, we can look at it doing an app as well. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, all the best. Thank you. And Thank Rafael, you. building on Shweta's question, um, the, what it means when it's native, it means that the student needs to be in front of uh, a desktop or a laptop to run Amy? No, sorry. It means that it can run on a desktop, laptop, tablet, iPad, phone. It's been designed so that it fits onto all of those. Perfect. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. That wasn't clear on my part. You're welcome. Um, was there a question from Ravi? Uh, yeah. I just wanted to understand if this got some uh, uh, endorsements from KSH. What kind of recognition do you have, from, the, especially from the inspector's walk-in? Uh, and if the schools are better use this, uh, what kind of recognition would you have from the DSIB inspectors, please? Thank you. Uh, we haven't got any official accreditation in our system yet, especially not within um, the accreditation authorities that are used here. Um, we are looking at working on developing those over time, but we can't give anything like that at this stage. We have been recognized by a number of awards around the world um, for the work that we've done, but have no official accreditation. Raphael, I think your sound may have dropped or. Sorry. I, I can hear him. Oh, you could hear him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. So uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, we're, we're targeting school, um, especially around early, sort of early high school is, is the probably the best uh, age group to trial it at. But we do also, we could also do a, a good trial for primary school. Okay. Thank you. And I see there was a question from Eriat as well. Hello. I would Hello. like to know, um, suppose if we are subscribing your website, so mm -hmm. how can we, um, uh, how can we go with that particular? So are we supposed to subscribe for the whole school or whole a uh, particular grade or section or what what is your uh, target i mean what is your plan for that yes so so during the sort of trial it'll just be a group maybe one class or something so you can try it out and make sure you you like it and get to know it um, and then you can decide later on if you want to roll it out for the whole school or for one year group or one class uh, that, that's quite flexible and you have for the grade 11, 12 senior classes also, you have this plan? Uh, well, as I said, we'd, we'd work with you and see what you're teaching right now and set that up specifically for you so for customized. these trials. Yeah. Customize, okay. Yeah, yeah. So how many, how many days you are proposing or the whole year or what is your? Well, for a trial, I think it would be maybe four or five weeks or so um, initially just to 
to make sure it works and you can really get, get used to how that looks for you. Okay. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. Ah, I was muted. Okay, Rafa, thank you so much. Maybe you can drop uh, your email on the website on how I will to do that. Him, and you can follow up as well uh, with all those questions. And thank you so much for that. And next, we're going to have um, Henry from. Yeah, just, just one more question. Of course, of course. Please go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Rafa, I just logged into this uh, website, mm -hmm. ami.app. Uh, and I was I had to log in with my Facebook or Gmail account. That is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I logged in with my Gmail account, mm -hmm. and I could see some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I got into basic edition. Mm -hmm. So if we ask our students to log in, how how will they log in? If I ask my grade one, two, three students to log in. Uh, so at the moment, so the, what you're logging logging into there is a demo system. So that only has a small amount of the content on it. Again, this is part of our setup for you is to actually put, make sure that the right material is available to, to your students. Uh, the moment we have login based on Gmail um, or Facebook, uh, but we can also do any email address, et cetera. So we have some options there, but on the demo system, we, we only have those ones available. Do yeah, you have so a we'll specific have to... requirement? Uh, yeah, probably we wanted for the students. Uh... So probably we'll have to give the uh, the students, uh, we'll ask the parents to log in through their IDs probably. And right, then right. the students can work on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the great, you know, maybe your eight to 12 year old children, they will not have their own email IDs. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that is the best way you suggest that. I think so. I'll, let's have a conversation offline and we'll just look at exactly how that would work best for you and your and your students. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for all those questions. And I think in relation to all of the companies, uh, something, especially since we're in this transition of having to do possibly a test on onboarding online, creating a bit of a handbook that assists um, even, you know, how to log into the products, how to use them from a parent side, from the learner side, and from the learner that needs assistance. So anyone that very rightly said, Shreta, thank you so much for pointing that out for someone that does not have an email ID or uh, for Amani or was this application for, um, you know, uh, for much younger students. And I think in line with the much younger uh, target, I'm uh, really happy to introduce Henry from GoBubble. So uh, Henry, please go ahead, share your screen and introduce yourself. Excellent. I will do. Thank you very much, Nee, Veronica. Uh, so, uh... <laughs> Uh, you should, uh, sorry, bear with me a moment. It was working perfectly before. Uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, Veronica, what I'd suggest just for time, sorry, because I'm on a, an Apple Mac and um, it doesn't quite like Zoom with the, <laughs> with the permissions. Do you want to jump to the next presentation just for everybody? I can sort out the system permissions in the background because it was working fine when I tested it. Before the call, okay. but I think everyone's on the call. It's not liking something, so um, not a problem. Not a problem. We can. Well, that was all. Okay, no problem. You're gonna make us wait. <laughs> 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 not a problem. Okay, um, Hardik, um, uh, Hardik is dialing in from India. Um, Hardik, would you be able to start your presentation next? Sure, oh, would love to. Fantastic. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hardik Desai. I'm the founder of Melzo.com. Um, I'm joining in from India and thank you for the opportunity. I believe you can see my screen now. So um, we started with a vision to help the internet evolve from 2D to 360 3D because we feel that's the next media platform that's going to take over the world. And to facilitate, uh, facilitate that, we created a platform that makes it very easy to create, share, discover, and consume virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence application on any device with or without the headset on any internet speed without any install or any downloads. But before I go any further with my presentation, I'd like to show you one demo um, of the kind of content that has been created on Melzo platform so far. I believe the demo should be on your screen now. So this is uh, an uh, educational content about dinosaurs. Um, so types of dinosaurs, for example, if I go through that, I can not only 
uh, see all the different dinosaurs all around me and I've muted the sound, but there's also sounds there, but I also have information pop up about them. Similarly, we have an AI driven experience in 360 where students can ask questions and get answers. So for example, if I ask the students here, uh, do you have a canteen facility in the campus? Do you have canteen facility in the campus? So it would fetch the appropriate answer. Yes, the university has canteen facility in the campus. While taking us on a tour there. And finally, something in biology where we have something for the parts of flowers. And if I click on hover over the flower, um, it would give me the detailed information pop out. Yep. Um, so with these brief uh, demonstrations, I'd like to go back to my presentation. I'm going to stop share for a moment and just reshare the slides. Right, so where do these kind of uh, applications come into use really? So I understand that uh, schools across UAE and now even across India have been shut closed because of the latest outbreak of the virus. And not just that, many times there are man-made or natural disasters which remain, which force the schools to remain shut. Uh, during such times, if we had a module where, you know, just like Teams, but uh, virtually the students and teachers could connect with each other uh, from any time, anytime, anywhere uh, from across the geographies and interact with each other over virtual learnings like the ones that we just saw earlier. Uh, it's a cloud-based platform. The content creation is really as simple as drag, drop, click, place. So the teachers need not learn coding and programming. It's just as simple as five, 10 minute job. And it can be accessed on any smartphone, any desktop, any device um, using just a web link. So you can just send your uh, kids one web link via WhatsApp, email, or YouTube. And they open that link and they can start interacting with you and consuming the VR content and learning in a virtual environment. Um, for that, we've created the Melzo Creator, which lets, which gives the power to the teachers to create interactive content in a matter of minutes, just drag, drop, click, place. Um, now, this is something we call the Guru Student Module. Uh, what the Guru Module essentially does is, unlike Teams or Zoom or Skype or any other video conferencing solution, the Guru Module has a special functionality where the students can talk to the teacher, but the students cannot talk amongst themselves and the teacher can talk to all the students and listen to all the students. Now, all of you who, who are teachers and educators, you would know that there's always that one noisy kid in the class who's trying to create disruptions. This module does away with those interruptions and those distractions resulting in more focus and uh, more learn, better learning outcomes. Um, you can embed any document. So within the virtual world, you could put in PDFs, PPTs, uh, Excel sheets, YouTube videos, and so on. Any kind of information can be embedded within the VR environment. Um, uh, teachers can learn to use this platform in as little as two hours. It's really as simple as that. Uh, we can do a POC with any school in, in a matter of five days. We offer free POCs to start with until you get comfortable with the platform and the technology. And then if you choose to adopt on a wider scale, we can discuss that. Um, and all classes and content, if you want us to prepare the content based on your material, we provide that service as well. Um, there are a bunch of features to make the uh, experience more interactive. I take that uh, on one-to-one -one basis when we start discussions. Um, we work with 25 schools and universities in India, uh, including IITs, IIMs, um, uh, and other uh, schools and colleges. Uh, we've trained about 2,000 students to create content on their own. Uh, so not just the teachers, but the students themselves could become creators in VR, AR worlds. And uh, about 5,000 projects have been created by students so far. Uh, we have 7 million plus views from across the world. and. On average, our content generates six minute plus engagement time. Now, this is not really educational content because the educational content goes up to 30, 40 minutes. This is in general VR AR content created on the platform. But again, that is more than 83% of all websites. Uh, we won numerous awards uh, uh, and we won about $100,000 in prize money from WhatsApp, Startup India, and uh, Vibrant Gujarat 
as one of the most innovative startups uh, out there. We'd love to work with you, uh, especially uh, if there's anything we can do to help the current situation make it in the current situation make it a little bit easier. We'd love to be part of that journey with you. Uh, thank you for the presentation opportunity and happy to take questions. Thank you, Hardik. Thank you so much for that uh, presentation. And I believe that uh, you know uh, schools engaging virtual reality and augmented reality um, as part of the, the delivery of the classrooms has been uh, has been highlighted. Um, I think one of the questions that we get a lot is: Do you need a headset? Uh, to be able to experience uh, the content um, um, that to be able to create and to experience this kind of content? Sure, thank you for the question. So the students don't really need a headset. If they have any headset, be it an Oculus or a Quest or even a simple cardboard, they can see the same content uh, immersively and interactively in 3D. But even if they don't have the headset, just they can be using their phone or a laptop or a tablet and just using their thumb to scroll and navigate the 360 environment. So it works both with and without the headset. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for answering that. Um, is there any other questions uh, so far? If not, uh, Hardik has already put his contact details on the website and we'll be sharing uh, also a one pager and links, maybe you want to put links to the demos that you just showed us. Sure. I'll, I'll do that. Great. Hi, we would like to know, hi, it's really, really interesting. Uh, we would like to know, this is a, this particular um, program is for all subjects or limited to particular certain subjects? Right, so ma'am, we are actually a tech company. So we give you the tools so that you can create content on your own. As such, we don't have content um, uh, of our own, but we have a local partnership with, uh, I'm sure Fahad would be presenting next. So if you wish uh, together with Fahad, we could also create content for you um, and, and, and uh, give you a complete bespoke turnkey solution. But uh, you could as well just use the platform on your own and create content in a matter of minutes uh, using uh, the tools you all, using the content you already have like PPTs or PDFs or uh, so on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. But it's really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much, um, mm -hmm. Hardik, and thank you for sharing uh, the links. Um, yes. Can you share the links uh, with, an, uh, with an actual URL that we can click on? Okay, just a moment. Yeah, just take your time. Um, I think uh, let's, um, Henry, are you ready to go again? Yes, I am. Fantastic, okay. Perfect, so Henry, please go ahead. Excellent, hi everyone. Uh, right, this time, uh, because I've sorted out the security settings, it has let me share the screen. So hopefully uh, you can all see uh, the presentation uh, now. Uh, so um, my name's uh, Henry Platten. I'm the founder uh, and CEO of Go Bubble. Uh, I was a, a sergeant in the police and have worked with online safety and child protection now for more than 15 years, going back to Bebo and MySpace days. From doing so much work with schools uh, and winning all of the top awards in the UK for innovation and for keeping children safe online, one of the things was very apparent, and in particular for under 13s. And that's the sheer volume of children under age who use social media before they should. Uh, so we're talking about children using WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, any of the main platforms, almost 78% of children under 13 lie about their age to be able to use social media. They do this not because they wish to be contacted by strangers or to see content which is bad. They do it because they want to chat with their friends. Now, the implications of this are very clear for schools in terms of safeguarding. So when we actually look at safeguarding, almost a quarter of all children have been approached by an unknown adult through social media. And if anything from my time in the police, this figure is underreported. I would argue it's probably almost double that. And having seen the worst that can happen for children, uh, both my time in the police and also working with schools across the UK, 
through an education program that we have called eCadets that's benefited more than a million children. It's clear that children and teachers are looking for help and support in a way to address this. Um, also, when looking at the impact for classrooms, almost 11 days are lost every year in every classroom with teachers having to deal with social media issues that have happened outside of school. The key thing is that we say to kids, don't use social media, you're too young, but they still will. So what we looked at with Go Bubble actually was a different approach. How could we ensure that we were giving a safe playground for kids and for schools, which looked and acted just like a social media site, but actually address the two issues around content and contact. And Go Bubble was born. Children at school play together, work together, and learn together. And 78% of us use some form of social media to view messages and content. Children as young as five will be on platforms designed for grown-ups. Go Bubble is a safer, healthier, and kinder platform used in the schools across the world. Content is checked before it appears, giving peace of mind and to teachers and staff. Go Bubble has been designed by X Police, so safety is guaranteed. And so is kindness. It rewards the likes you give, not the ones you get. Social media is fun for children. Now it can be safer, healthier, and kinder. So exactly as it says, you know, for us in GoBubble, there is a key approach that we have, which is to be safer, healthier, and kinder. So GoBubble is free for schools. Uh, it's web-based, but it works on any device which is web-enabled, uh, any iPad, uh, iPhone, uh, Android devices, laptops, Chromebooks, you name it. For us, there are two key areas that we look at. One is the view for parents and for teachers, which you can see on the laptop view here, which just looks like Facebook and Twitter. And then for the kids, they have a view which looks like Instagram and TikTok. Interestingly, we've actually had reports that have come back from parents, from principals and from teachers that children have stopped using Snapchat and Instagram because they have GoBubble in their school. Also, principals and teachers have seen an impact in children's behavior offline with bullying decreasing and overall mood and behavior increasing offline because of GoBubble. And GoBubble really works in two ways. In terms of the contact, we can verify that everybody using the platform is a child. It is impossible for an adult to use a child account within GoBubble and therefore the children have their own safe space. The second area is we've built our own AI powered software moderation that sits in the background and it checks all content before it goes live. And what this means is that teachers and head teachers are not having to spend time moderating content. Actually, they get to see the enjoyment and the interaction of the kids. It's cross curricular, it supports English and Arabic. And as of Thursday this week, it will also be embedded into Microsoft Teams as an app. So if you're using Microsoft Teams in your school, then you'll simply be able to click on the GoBubble app in the dashboard and access it straight away. I mentioned about the three key streams that we have. So safer, say we verify that everyone is a child. We also check the content. Kinder, as the video mentioned, we actually reward the likes that children give, not the likes they get. So the kinder they are, the higher their score. And finally, healthier. So we actually switch off at night, switches off at half nine, and we say to the kids, we're getting some sleep, you should too, we'll see you in the morning. GoBubble is in 33 different countries. We have schools across the UAE and GCC. Uh, looking at the UAE, we have schools in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, uh, wider GCC, we have schools in Oman, uh, and as I mentioned, we're in 33 countries around the world. All of this has been through word of mouth from teachers. They've seen the impact that's been delivered into their classrooms and enhancing the lessons, and they've spread the word. GoBubble can be used in literacy, math, STEM, sports. The creativity is endless in the way that the teachers use it within the classroom, and if children wish to use it at home, because a lot of schools now have been registering because of the school closures. In fact, we've seen an increase in more than 400% across the UAE just this last weekend, 
with schools and parents signing up to use the platform, knowing that it will give children that safe space so they're not feeling isolated and they will still be able to engage safely with their friends. It also runs alongside any LMS that you may have within your school and the teachers can share links from your learning management system directly into GoBubble as well. Uh, in terms of next steps, um, it's very easy to get started in GoBubble. You can actually register your school and your class and they can be started in under two minutes. Everything is secure. We create the usernames and the passwords for you to be able to hand out. And as I mentioned, we can verify that everyone is a child when they're accessing their accounts. Uh, I'd be delighted to take any questions that you may have. And thank you very much uh, indeed for your time. Thank you, Henry. Thank you for, for sharing um, um, GoBubble. And I, I want to, I think definitely when you share uh, the website and the links on the chat, you can also share that you've, um, um, you've had quite a run. You've also been in uh, Dubai Eye on the radio, correct? Yes, yep. So we were, uh, we were interviewed for Dubai Eye at the start of the closures. Uh, also, Time Out UAE Kids have run a feature on us. Uh, Teach Middle East uh, are running uh, a piece on us uh, in the next week as well. Um, I think really that's, that's come from um, the educators and the parents being aware that you know, social media is, a, is an issue for kids anyway, uh, irrespective of the closure. But in particular now, because of the closure, you know, there's a high risk that children will be using platforms which aren't designed for them, uh, like Snapchat and TikTok, just to be able to stay in contact with their friends but that that does cause safeguarding risks. And that's the beauty with GoBubble being free for the schools is it's there as a safe, protected wall garden to sit alongside the classroom activities. Perfect, thank you. Um, do we have any questions at all from anyone on the call? Great, so if there's no questions for anyone, so I can see Girija, you had a, you had a question? Yes, yes. Uh, yes Mr. Henry. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, we are working on Microsoft Teams. So if uh, I use the Go Bubble uh, app, uh, do you mean to say that no child will be using any abusive language or inappropriate uh, language? Correct. Okay, but uh, um, how does it work? Okay, so uh, the way it works is this, that uh, within GoBubble, when a child tries to create a post, or we call that a bubble, so that could be uh, in written text, that could be emoji, it could be photo, it could okay. even be video. Uh, mm -hmm. What happens is the point that they click send, it goes through our AI that checks all of the content first, uh, we have over 6,000 watchwords that it checks against, and those are split down just like a traffic light in terms of red, amber, and green. Anything that's flagged as red or amber is stopped straight away and never appears. We also don't miss that teachable moment for the child. So we actually say to the child, look, your bubble couldn't be shared because it contained, and if there was a certain word that was used, it'd be the certain word or if they took a photo or a video which had uh, either uh, some exposed skin, if it had uh, alcohol, uh, if it had uh, weapons or anything that could scare or alarm or distress another child, our system picks up on it and stops it straight away. So as an educator, you never have to deal with issues once they've appeared uh, and that you have to rely on people reporting it back through it stops it at source. Anything that's flagged as red as well, we do notify you um, as the school, but also because uh, we have the school closures at the moment, the parent is notified uh, because obviously they are the person who's in direct contact with the child at that point. So for you, you have complete peace of mind. You don't have to sit there and pre-moderate the chat function. Um, it does it all for you. And if there's anything that you need to know, it will let you know, but you don't have to then go and have to uh, have a whole series of tasks that you need to do on the back of it. It's just stopped it already. So uh, you don't have the headache. 
Okay, what message you will be sending to the child? Yeah, so uh, teachers have used it in a, a range of different ways. So um, take a, a very recent example. So with World Book Day, uh, which was uh, just over a week ago, uh, the uh, educators at some schools were asking the children who'd been reading a book to share a short video or a photo or write a short message about the book that they've been reading, why they enjoyed it, what was happening in the story at that point, and what they thought was going to happen next. And within the school, there are a couple of different ways that you can use it. So when you first set up your account, uh, your group, your class, is just for you as the educator. If you feel that you wish to, as the educator being the gatekeeper, you can connect your classroom to any other classroom within GoBubble if you wish. But that's your choice as the educator. So what some people were doing for World Book Day is just in their class, getting the kids to share their, their books back and their thoughts. Some educators as well said, well, actually, we'd like to set up a pen pal scheme. We'd like to connect to some other classes. And then the children can share their stories with other children the same age in a different part of the world. So again, they were able to do that. And the interesting thing is that we saw the children sharing books in Canada and then children in the UK seeing those videos and then leaving positive comments and wanting to go off and then actually read those books as well themselves. Um, in terms of for STEM, people have been doing coding and then sharing uh, the code back through GoBubble. They've been programming um, robots or robots uh, and then sharing a video of it taking place and then working through. Um, but it's very much within GoBubble, especially around the closures, it's really gearing around that social and emotional learning and that impact of children not being able to be in the same room as each other, but still being able to collaborate and communicate safely. Okay, one last question. Is it absolutely free? Yes. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's very good. Okay. That's right. and, and it's a nice quick answer for me to give. My parents were both teachers. So okay. uh, I was a police sergeant, uh, but my father was a principal and my mum was a key stage one, key stage two STEM teacher. So for schools, it's 100% free. Um, okay. Parents, um, the, we have actually been working towards for parents that there was going to be a small charge of around about 15 dirham a month uh, that was actually due to come in this month. However, because of the closures, um, because of our social heart, we have stopped that. So uh, for parents during the closures, it is free as well. So that's how I can say it's completely okay. free. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Henry, can I ask a quick question about uh, Go Bubble in the sense of so it's integrated with Teams? Awesome. That's also potentially introducing children to older technology that we use in the workforce. Um, but in terms of in terms of participation um, and and measuring the engagement, does the product do that? And how would a teacher report on that? Yeah, it does. A really good question. And uh, delivery fellow, one of the things that we looked at uh, was in terms of the analytics that we can give back to schools and in terms of uh, identifying that impact. So not only can we record and show obviously the amount of time that the kids have been using the platform itself, we can also track by students, by class, by year group or grade level, and by entire school, um, certain key words and terms that have been used. Uh, we're also able uh, as an early warning system for educators to be able to show the mood of the child as well. Child's mood is dropping for whatever reason, if they are showing signs of stress or worry, um, or uh, alternatively, uh, if they are uh, very happy, very positive, uh, then we can show that back to the educator as well. Um, obviously for the educator, they can see that based on the class and if there's one particular child who's worried, who that child is. Um, so it's, it's very much at the discretion of the educator, but it's only the teacher that would see the analytics. It's nobody else who gets to see the analytics. Thank you. Perfect. If we have no more questions, um, Henry, if uh, you and uh, Danielle can uh, kindly uh, put your contact details, your email, uh, maybe a couple of links to the uh, to the interview and articles, but we can have a look on the chat. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, no, I'd love to do that. And thank you all so much indeed for the opportunity to, to share it through. Perfect. And thank you so much. Um, 
I think we have next is uh, Fahad. Uh, Fahad, can can you switch on your video? And can you hear us? Yeah. Here I am. Hi, everybody. Hi, Fahad. How are you? Share the, uh, the screen. Can you all, can you all see? Yes, we can. Great. So um, let me start. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Fahad Mubshed. I am the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Nuat. Uh, so, Nuat is a, an immersive gaming and education company. We started in 2016 focusing on the leisure and entertainment space. We've been creating virtual reality attractions for arcades on a global scale. We've sold all the way from um, Asia all the way to the US. We've made bespoke solutions and ready-made solutions. And some of the bespoke solutions we've done for the likes of Kidzania, if anybody's been to uh, Dubai Mall um, while it was open, uh, we've done things like firefighting experiences where kids can learn how to put out fires. We've done multiple uh, surgeries, uh, multiple multiplayer surgeries, and escape rooms, as well as a, uh, a space center. And so during that time of entertainment, we knew that we found out that the retention of students and users who are actually using the product on the education side uh, causes for repetition. We all know the repetition is the mother of skill. The more you do it, the, the better you are at it. So that coincided with, with the time of like noticing that my kids were going on the same path that I was going to, which is we receive information in school, we take some tests, we break for summer, and then we go through the summer slide where we forget a lot of what we've learned. And then we go the next year and we start over, except we go a level higher. And the, the biggest problem with that is the foundation that we have ends up being not as solid as it's supposed to be. And we end up playing catch up while the teachers need to advance further on moving forward. So it was during that time where I noticed, well, there's got to be a way where we can teach students and, and, and kids and, and, and learners how to master what they learn and how to learn things from a molecular level of whatever they're learning. And so we went to where my kids are learning, which is JBS. We asked them to give us a, uh, a room where we put our VR equipment and we've created Qubit, which is our educational, uh, uh, educational platform where we build experiences in virtual reality. Uh, it's also available on tablet and desktop. Uh, the idea is to create games where the students would use whatever they're learning and apply it into special or a specific task. So let's assume that they're learning uh, fractions, for example, they would be put in a pizza shop and then they would slice the pizzas into the fractions and they'd serve it to the customers. Then they take the money and exchange it and now they're learning decimalization. Um, uh, same thing with chemistry, which I'm gonna show uh, uh, in, in a bit, which shows how students are working with molecules and how they're interacting with molecules, heating them up and cooling them down to see and feel what happens in the, in the, in the, on the molecular level, rather than try to imagine when a teacher is trying to explain it to them. That whole mental model basically changes the way students that go up in, in classes and basically go into the world, view the world around them. They become more, uh, they, they can start making sense of how things come together and they can get what we call blended learning and say, oh, well, I know how these work from a foundational level. I know how these work from a foundational level. I can shrink things to the first principle and build up from there. And so, I mean, the biggest problem uh, that we have right now is there hasn't really been a huge change in, in education. Um, it's been made for the industrial uh, and agricultural days. And we're now living in a knowledge and technology where students will have to learn how to learn as well as understand technology enough to uh, be able to navigate the world that's around them. And so if we look at the classes, uh, my colleague uh, Hardy before me was mentioning how it's from the 80s to now, even before that, it's one teacher, lots of students, and that hasn't really changed with the exception of having laptops, but you're still sort of a passive learner. What we're trying to do is, um, I'm gonna skip a few slides in the interest of time. What we're trying to do is go from being passive to being an active learner, to be able to use all your, your, your uh, senses into really being immersed in whatever you're trying to learn. So, if 85% of the jobs that will exist in 2030 require unknown skills, then we need to accelerate the uh, rate of learning and the rate of mastery. That's very, very important. So rather than receiving the information, 
Napoleon Hill once said, knowledge is only potential power. It becomes power when you use that knowledge in a specific course of action. So that's what we're doing in the content that we, we create. Um, we can uh, show you real quick uh, a sample of lessons that we've uh, built. So we've done uh, some math where you're in a pizza shop. Uh, we've done chemistry where you're in a chemistry lab and we've also done physics. And if you'll just give me a second here, I will share a quick um, 20 second video uh, showing what it looks like in, uh, uh, sorry, give me one second here. Welcome to the space labs. And today we'll be looking into space of matter. In order so in to here, see, first, we will have to get to the atomic level of the matter. You see, the user is now basically on a molecular here. level of an ice cube. This is and many solids maintain the shape and form. So the sample that we also have is it shows a user actually using a, a thermal beam to uh, uh, move things around and see what happens to the molecules as they move together. Um, so if we have another 20 seconds, I'd just love to, to uh, uh, share that as well. Let's introduce temperature change to the equation. And so that's the user using his hand or her hand to uh, heat up the molecules and see what happens. So the idea of this, this level of uh, gamification is it allows for better retention, it allows for repeatability, and it becomes sort of like mission driven rather than just receiving information uh, for the purpose of um, uh, going through either a test or trying to memorize what they're trying to do. So, I mean, that in a nutshell is uh, what we do at Nawat. So if there are any questions, I'd love to uh, um, answer them. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Fahad. Thank you so much. I think we can also attest that uh, um, we have uh, quite a few children have been trying out um, uh, Cubit uh, at the space in Emirates Towers in the past couple of weeks and uh, uh, your children as well. So thank you so much for making that happen. That's my pleasure. I mean, the best part of all this is seeing the reactions of the users that use it. They just go, wow, you know, and uh, that's why we fell in love with creating content and experiences and, and focusing on education is really, really important to us. So Perfect. Thank you. And um, also, if any school would like to get involved, um, you've been doing some onboarding uh, with some teachers. So that has been that has been happening as well since last week. So um, how has the journey been with the teachers? Have they been able to um, understand well and understand how they're going to be able to use this um, in a virtual setting, for example? Yeah, so one of the things we're doing right now, specifically on, uh, because, because there's a lot of students that are gonna be uh, learning remotely, what we've done is we've taken the videos that you've seen, which is an actual game, and we've broken it apart and we made it into quick videos and we've attached multiple choice questions. And so some of the things that we're trying to do to help teachers during this time, um, we're, we are offering it for free for now. Um, uh, our chemistry, uh, we're working on getting math ready as well in time for next week. The idea is um, th th it's, it's always better for the student to be able to use it, but still having a fun video like that is, 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 uh, uh, can be engaging for a lot of uh, students. So. I'm muted. Thank you for that. Uh, Giricho, you have a question? Yes. Yes, Mr. Fahad. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. What about any language learning content? Uh, do you well, have any, because nowadays children are not interested in learning languages. Uh, they may be interested in science, gamification, all these things, but how do you introduce learning a language through gamification? So the, the way we would tackle that, we don't have the content ready yet, but it's part of the, uh, uh, it's in the schedule of things that we want to do. The way we would tackle that is we put students in, say, like an escape room, and in order to escape to the next level, they have to pronounce a specific phrase in a specific way. Um, and what we've learned is a lot of students, whether they watch their favorite um, uh, anime show, um, they're going to learn a different language by trying to repeat things. And it's that repetition and having, to, uh, having the need to be able to say things in a specific way 
in order to navigate a game or an escape room. I mean, that, that we found uh, received some positive feedback in our initial testing that we've done. Okay, how do you uh, have a demo with the teachers? If you are interested in physics, mm -hmm. uh, how are you planning to have a demo? Um, At this scenario, now. In this scenario, uh, if the teacher has a, uh, um, if the teacher has, uh, I mean, if the students have access to their laptops, so a lot of like our school that my kids go to have, uh, students have laptops, we would just uh, send everybody the, uh, uh, the execute, uh, executable uh, file and they'd be able to download and play the game uh, in that specific subject, so. Okay, okay, thank you. My pleasure. Perfect, any more questions? If not, I think we'll um, go ahead uh, with our next uh, company. Great, Fahad, I think if you can just um, put down a link uh, to Nuat, uh, that would be great on the chat. And uh, do we have Tom's and Anna on the call? Hi, it's just Tom's, but uh, Anna's working on uh, different stuff. So okay. I, will, I will do a presentation on Stolfeggio. Perfect, okay, go ahead. So just a second, I'll share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Perfect. I'm excited to learn how many um, how many of the teachers here have uh, music uh, music teacher colleagues in their schools. I think this will be very relevant. Perfect. Um, I think yeah, we can start and then we can have a bit of a Q and A after. Sure. Okay, so my name is Sams. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Solfeggio, and we make music education lessons in schools and at home more engaging and exciting for students and also easier for teachers. Uh, actually, I have my, my background is in music. Uh, I, I, my mom is a music teacher, and I started my own music school 10 years ago. That's where the idea of Solfeggio also came. And uh, with the experience in music education, I know that Music is actually super, super important for every, every school because children who practice music on a regular basis, they have better grades, they are less aggressive. And I think in these stressful times, it's even more important to pay attention to music education. But teaching music is also super difficult. And if you have a class of even 10, 20, maybe even 30 students, then you probably know that having every kid playing a music instrument at the same time and making a something out of it, something that they can relate to, is uh, very challenging for teachers. So we're here to facilitate music teachers' work. Uh, we created Solfeggio. It's an online app that simplifies music teaching in schools, and it also inspires practicing students at home. So our goal and mission is to inspire more students to become piano players, guitar players, singers, and uh, do the stuff they love uh, around music. So how, how, uh, how Solfeggio is made? First, it consists of popular song libraries, songs that students actually know and care about. These are the songs they listen to in Spotify. Uh, latest hits, we regularly, every week, update our library with songs that students now currently listen to. This, what, this is what makes them inspired about music. And then it consists of audiovisual chatbot technology that explains you and shows how music actually works, what it consists of. The chatbot then can also help the uh, students to learn at home and show you how to play different music instruments, starting from piano, ukulele, basically everything that you would need to teach in regular school music lessons and a bit more on, uh, on top of, of that as well. So what our product does, it makes practical song playing experience very easy for regular schools uh, by simply showing the sound and visuals of song in, in a real time. So I can show you a quick video on how it, how it looks like. Welcome to Solfeggio, an app for improving yourself and experiencing music. Solfeggio makes it easy and fun to learn music by playing well-known songs together in school and at home. Select a song and see the sheet music for the melody, chords, and rhythm in real time, along with high-quality recordings. 
but not their own standing right in front of me. Need some guidance? Choose one of our musical journeys and discover how music works through tips, tutorials, and assignments. The Musical Journeys complement school curriculums while engaging students with songs they know and love. At home, students can practice on their own or together with friends and parents. With Solfeggio, students have the guidance and motivation they need to develop their talents and experience the joy of playing music. So what I can say, teachers, music teachers really love Solfeggio. 92% would recommend it to other teachers and we have lots of lots of great testimonials. Actually, Solfeggio is used all over the world. More than 5,000 schools have signed up uh, for Solfeggio from 117 countries, many also from, from United Arab Emirates. And we have more than 400 new schools signing up per month, every, every month. And what's most important is that students love it even more. We have 79% of students, after they have tried out Solfeggio, in their music lessons, they also are inspired to practice music and learn music on their own at home as well. And uh, this this uh, product also brings results for for you as a, as a school. I, one of the me measures that we find important is that students report an increased engagement in school studies in general and uh, in this particular in music classes. Uh, teachers, music teachers, report that the atmosphere is becoming more positive in their lessons and and students are better disciplined. And uh, teachers report that also Solfeggio saves their preparation time and helps to realize their curriculum goals. So what we usually offer schools is a four week free pilot uh, with clear measurements and goals, but we also have launched last week uh, a free plan to help and support schools who need some online guidance. And we have also made online lesson plans so that your music teacher can actually host music lessons online. So it's made available for free. There's 30 songs that you can use and, and many, many lesson plans for online use that you can do for free. However, if you do a pilot with, uh, with us, then we will help you extra and we will do a one-on-one -on -one onboarding call. We'll give you all the content for, for, for one month, uh, all the lesson plans, and you will get access to our community and support. We'll also give you stats on your student activity engagement, which I would find very important to see actually how how much do students do practice at home when they're not with a teacher like online. So uh, the people supporting you is this team of music teachers, guitar players, piano players, also an opera singer. So we're here to help you succeed with your music curriculums and goals. And please do reach out to me. Uh, my email is toms at solfeggio. You can also write me on WhatsApp. And if you're interested to have I, I will be happy to answer your questions on, on this and we can please, please try it out. I will send a link uh, in, in the comments uh, section as well. So that's, that's it from my side. Looking forward to your questions. Thank you, Tom's. Really appreciate it. Um, so let's say that I want, uh, I can also use this not only in school. So let's say I want uh uh, my children to use solfeggio. Is that possible? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So the chatbot classes first, anyone can sign up. That is totally for free to sign up to solfeggio. And then what's important is that these chatbot classes can teach you currently guitar and piano. If you don't even have a, uh, a, a music teacher around you. So this is mainly meant for continuing to continue learning after you have some basic knowledge of music and the music lessons but then it, you can actually do that on your own as well. Got it, thank you so much. And uh, do you have, um, I'm wondering if any of the teachers uh, and the schools on this call, do you have music departments? I believe we had- uh, yes. yes or no? Yes or no. I believe that we had uh, um, one of the schools in our call right yesterday that was really interested in music. So, I mean, we can definitely follow up um, uh, with the teachers. If you can just put down the details on the chat. Um, and we can also just try it out ourselves. So we have plenty of time to do that. Uh, Girija, I can yeah, see. Yeah, we have, we have a music teacher, only one music teacher. And we have music lessons till grade eight. 
and uh, we are do yeah we are doing it uh, well i would uh, like to introduce this to the school and uh, i will uh, get back to you Hans. perfect okay please, thank please you please do reach out to her, to the music teacher and 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 we'll be happy to help okay thank you perfect thank you no oh, thank you so much and okay there is one more company that cannot uh, connect directly today so we'll be playing a video um uh, a video that we have made a recording for here by future accelerators um i really appreciate that some of the teachers have actually expressed their interest uh to also meet with this company this company called cogx uh, cogx is a deep research company that focuses on the science of learning and to enable teachers um, to teach better and uh, also also focused on professional development so i will share my screen it's going to be a really quick video and i will also share javier's um details uh on the chat and uh uh, also on the webinar link that I'll send you if you want to get in touch. My name is Javier Arguello. I'm the founder and executive director of COGX. So COGX is a research and development firm in applied cognitive science. Our primary task is to interpret scientific research on human learning and apply it so that students can be more effective at learning and teachers can be more effective at teaching students how to learn. What we know through research is that most students, when they're not, the, not explicitly taught the science of learning, will rely on very ineffective strategies to learn. And research also reveals that the vast majority of teachers in the world have not had an opportunity to learn how to teach students based on scientific principles of learning. So our task is to close that gap in order to make schooling and learning more effective. So if there's any questions uh, so far for, well, for COGEX, definitely happy to answer as much as I'm, as I'm able to. Um, and I do know that the company is working on a masterclass on the science of learning. So basically these are courses that take um, from four weeks up until a few, uh, it really depends on the kind of um, uh, combination that you get. Um, but we are working on a masterclass to be able to give a sample of what are the what is the focus on developing these co these cognitive skills uh, focused on the science of learning. So if any of you are interested in specific teacher training, uh, we'll definitely uh, please do get in touch or drop me an email. And uh, I believe this is. Um, this is all from the companies. Um, I'm wondering if there's any questions so far that anyone has from the teachers or the schools at this point. Uh, yes, we would like to know more about this particular program. So if you can share us, share the details or contact details of this particular company then it will be great yes this is for cogex right Ariat, uh, Ariat, I? yes sorry you're yeah. talking about cogex company yeah just now you have shown no that uh, yes, yes. So from the U.S., uh, uh, it is connected to innovation and science and how to teach the science, connecting to innovation also. So we would like to know more about this company. So if you can share us the details about this company, it will be great. Perfect. Will do. Thank you so much. Uh, and we'll definitely follow up with that. And yes, so if there's, not, uh, there's no more questions uh, so far. Uh, the next steps is to say thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, we've run over time uh, today, but definitely please share your feedback with us and with the companies. You have all their contact details. Um, I will be sharing a recording 
uh, of this webinar with you so you can share it internally with your teams and within the schools. Uh, feel free to connect directly with the companies. The companies um, feel free to connect directly with the schools and the teachers. Arrange follow-up meetings. Uh, some companies are here in Dubai if you feel comfortable to do so or definitely connect on Zoom uh, as we just have to have a virtual meeting. Um, if you want to know more about the Dubai Future Accelerators team or connect with any of us, please feel free to get in touch with myself or my colleague Karen. I will also share our details on the follow-up. And in the invite, there is a Google Drive link. There you'll be able to see uh, the one pages for the companies. We'll be also sharing the presentations on the same folder, as well as the one minute videos that you've seen as we saw for Javier, we also have for the other uh, seven companies. And feel free to have a look at these um, and initiate a discussion. So definitely get in touch. And thank you so much for taking the time today. Um,